Top of the morning everyone, my name is Tiri and I'm back with another video and today's video is about top 5 mistakes I made in job interviews. Now these are mistakes I made, not other people, these are mistakes that I knew uh, after the interview that I shouldn't have made such, such kind of mistakes. So I thought I should actually share this because for a lot of people uh, in recruitment we tend to always assume that recruiters have been doing this for a number of years and they will make some of these mistakes. Or for some of us who've been doing this job for quite a long time, uh, you'll find that I, I started my career uh, working for a university and I used to interview PhD graduates, I used to interview so many different people to try and give them opportunities, scholarships and different opportunities that we had uh, at the university. My career then changed and moved into pure recruitment space where I was looking after some of the graduate uh, programs. Uh, IT developers, so many different skills and so many different people at different levels. So now I've seen some of the best interviews or some of the graduates being interviewed uh, for different roles and coming back with the best answers or different reasons as to why they were the right candidates for those kind of jobs. And I've also made some of these very fundamental basic mistakes and I thought today it might actually be a good idea to sort of share some of these mistakes with everybody so that at least you know, after your interview and if you feel bad and you feel like you, you know, you made such a silly mistake, you don't beat yourself because we also do make these kind of mistakes. So I thought, let's just share something like this so that other people know that some of the mistakes that we also make in the recruitment space when we're also looking for jobs, you know, are mistakes that anybody else can do. So the first one is forgetting to confirm the company address um, before leaving the office to the interview. Now, this one was early stages of my career where I was looking at uh, changing jobs, not as early as like the first year, but I had already worked for a couple of years. And I, I got an opportunity for a job interview and me being me, I was like, okay, let me plan this. I planned it properly and got in the car, drove to the office that I thought I knew the interview was going to happen. Um, as I got there on time, I was there a bit earlier, 30 minutes before, and during this time I sat down in the car first to just prep and see how my answers are going to be, just making sure, you know the usual stuff where you start to say, okay, let me look at how I'm going to answer this question, if they ask this, if they ask that, and then 15 minutes before I was like, okay, let me go to reception, introduce myself and tell them that, you know, I'm here and I'm ready for the interview. Got to reception and informed them, okay, I'm here to see so and so and they called the recruiter and the recruiter's like but why is Tiri here you know he's supposed to be at office x and uh, the recruiter then comes downstairs and says um this is, isn't where the interview is supposed to be happening you're supposed to be in another office which is which was actually a lot closer to where my office was so if i would have just literally called or emailed or asked somebody to say where is this interview happening I would have actually avoided this mistake, but it was one of those things where driving back to where the interview was supposed to happen would have taken me about another 20, 30 minutes. So at that time, I already knew um, I've got like maybe seven or eight minutes before the interview is supposed to start. Uh, there is no way I'm going to make it back. So I literally just, you know, I, I was defeated at that time because it was such a, a simple mistake that I could have just fixed by emailing the the recruiter or emailing the line manager, whoever it was to just confirm where this office is. So just be very careful that every time you get a job interview, you know, you always check where this interview is happening because you need to know, you know, is it happening at the head office if there's a specific head office or is it happening at one of the other branches or one of the offices that exists? So don't be me and make that kind of mistake. And needless to say, unfortunately, I didn't get a second chance to interview again. Um, and I didn't get the job because, you know, I think they probably just, uh, after that first interaction, they just assumed, yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's not even worth it. He couldn't plan properly. And even though I could take this uh, as my mistake, you know, I sometimes also do blame the recruiter to say, you know, they could have actually told me in advance or they could have just, you know, also helped apologize to the line manager so that we can reschedule. But but I didn't feel too bad because I think later in life when when the, um, when I learned a bit more about the company, I realized that, you know, maybe it wasn't the right, it wasn't meant to be and I wouldn't have been happy in that particular place. The second mistake that I made was calling my interviewer by the wrong name. Um, there's nothing worse than uh, you get a uh, your calendar invite and within the calendar invite you see the two names 
for these recruit i mean for these interviewers and first thing that you think is like okay let me do enough research about these people and you go through these people and you know two two male uh and you look at them and you're like okay cool i know what this one has done i know what this one has done and because as recruiters we always say you need to personalize your interactions with the future line managers or personalize it with the recruiters or whoever it is you know it's always nice to at least know who's interviewing you and to be able to call them by name not to call them by mr x y and z just just be able to use their names and the mistake that i made was actually in that panel there was supposed to be two people interview me only one pitched up now your linkedin pictures uh back in the days used to not really expand enough for you to be able to see that face properly and um it, this, this gentleman just looked at me and said, uh, sorry, my name is so-and-so. And for me, that was actually probably one of the worst times to actually ever be corrected because in my head, I was thinking, gee, man, you know, how can you, how can you get it so wrong? And it was one of those simple mistakes. And the person didn't take it personal or didn't do anything. But because at that stage, I got corrected on the person's name, literally my whole interview persona, every single thing just changed. You know, I lost the ability to be able to respond to some of the questions. I literally lost the interview uh, based on just somebody correcting me on what their name was. So I always say to people, it's fantastic that you know who your interviewer is. It's fantastic that you know you've done enough research about them and what they're capable of. But don't ever beat yourself too much uh, when you get a name uh, incorrectly. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's also very difficult in the interview to ask somebody, how do I pronounce your name? Uh, for a lot of people, they're too scared of that. But there's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, please do go ahead and actually ask some of the people to say, how do I pronounce your name? The other thing that I actually then also suggest nowadays is LinkedIn has now given people opportunities to say, um, learn how to pronounce somebody's name. Like if you go into my LinkedIn page, you'll see a little audio there uh, where I actually pronounce my own name. And it allows you as, you know, whoever it is to actually pronounce my name correctly. So... So if you have that opportunity to actually do that and somebody has enabled that in their profile, just learn how to pronounce that name. But if you do make that mistake, just know that it does happen. The third mistake that I make was uh, forgetting to change some of the details on a resume template that I received from a friend of mine. So, and also once again, another simple silly mistake where um, I knew there was a job that I really, really wanted. I then asked a friend of mine to say, hey, listen, I know you've just uh, recently got a job and I know you're waiting for, for you to start and you're still serving your notice period. Can I use your template that you actually used to you know, apply for this job? And you know, my friend was very happy um, and he gave me the template and I literally corrected everything that I thought I corrected. And instead of actually sharing with somebody else to, you know, to check if I've made any mistakes on that resume, I literally sent it, applied, and I was called in for that interview. And the only time I realized this mistake was literally when I was sitting in front of the line manager. And the first thing that I saw was, uh, because at the time they actually had printed their resume and they had it in the uh, in front of them. Now at the, the bottom of the resume, you could still see, like in the footer of the resume, you could still see my friend's name, uh, their contact number, and some of these things. And because it's grayed out and it's very, very small, you know, when I was correcting everything, I forgot to actually change that. And one or two details in the resume, I could have actually adapted it to my specific job, but I just left them as they were. And when the time came and they asked me specifically about those two details, you know, I, I was a bit flustered because I didn't know how to explain it better to them uh, in such a way that it actually um, uh, reflects what my job was and what I had actually done. And unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity. I didn't get the job. So I think at the end, at the back of the mind, the manager just thought, you know, doesn't pay attention to detail, you know, doesn't know what they were doing, you know, and they've got some details that are not that details. And, and to be honest, it wasn't something that I did deliberately. And if I would have known, I would have actually made, uh, corrected some of those things. But unfortunately, I didn't do that. Now, they... The, the fourth thing that I actually forgot to do was forgetting to check the difference between uh, the time difference and the interview. So also, once again, a few years ago, um, I was ready to immigrate. I was ready to move over to Dubai and to all these different countries. Um, and I applied for this job in Dubai. And, and 
and it was beautiful it like the the recruiter reached out to me called me and and they said to me listen i will send you an invite uh for next week wednesday so that you and i can go through you know proper full interview with my manager and everything so i was like fantastic i'm ready for that um and the time came uh unfortunately the recruiter didn't actually send me the calendar invite but me be me i'm one of those people that if you say you're going to send something uh, i tend to also uh, create my own calendar invite on my side so i would then put a calendar reminder to say the interview is happening at the time and for example for for, for uh, argument's sake they said you know the interview will happen at 2 p.m uh next week wednesday and in my head i'm like 2 p.m next week wednesday i've got my reminder i'm ready for this like this is my job you know let's do this and now the time comes the day comes i still haven't received an invite from um uh, from the recruiter which would have actually saved me from myself because if i would have received the invite i would have seen that the invite would have been two hours earlier now i was prepping i was prepping i was ready for this job interview the time came 15 minutes before and as I logged in and I check everything and I see, okay, somebody was online, but they actually left. So I was like, okay, no, it's, it's just one of those things. And I sat and waited in the call. And then the time came, I sat and waited and waited and waited and nobody pitched up. And then uh, I think uh, later in that day, I received an email to say, that said, very disappointed in the fact that you didn't pitch up because my line manager and I were waiting in the call. Uh, the interview was supposed to be at this time of the day. And something said to me, just check what time it is between South Africa and Dubai. And only to find that at that time, it was literally a two hour time difference. So I was literally two hours late to my own job interview. And once again, didn't get the job. I did try to apologize to the recruiter, but they were, they were really a bit uh, not happy with me. So I didn't get that job. The final mistake was... Um, spilling food in my outfit before the interview um, this one is not necessarily a mistake as such it's just one of those things that do happen so if it does happen to you just know that it happens to everybody else now this day i was ready for uh, this job interview and i was a bit earlier to the interview because i decided to walk to that building and uh, when i got there um, there was uh, a lady selling food on the streets so i decided since i'm this early let me just quickly grab something to eat because you know your interviews are normally around 12-ish because you want to do it around the time when it's lunchtime so that you don't take time out of um, your employer's uh, calendar. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do it a bit earlier. So, you know, I eat and just as I was still eating, just the, the food and the grease just started dripping on my tie. And, and I remember just that feeling that just said, how can this happen now? Like, why now? You know, and... Uh, I went to the bathroom when I got into the building uh, because I took out the tie. I went to the bathroom. I asked the lady at reception, where can I go to the bathroom? Tried to really clean that tie. But but you know with ties, you can't really wash it uh, with your hands. You can't. Like, once it's got the grease, it's you either might try and take it to the dry cleaner. But 90% of the time, that tie is, is out of the window. You might as well throw it out. And I didn't have a spare tie at the time. So I literally just tried to dab, put it in a bit of hand soap to try and clean this but unfortunately just the, the grease could, I could still see it throughout the whole interview I could feel it like this whole time as, as the people were looking at me in my head I was just thinking ooh they're looking at the grease in my tie they're looking at the grease in my tie they're looking at the grease in my tie but I want to find that they actually didn't even see that the grease was there because I was lucky enough to get the job uh, by the way and then a few months later after you know, I got the job and I was talking to the line manager. I was like, oh man, I actually thought I didn't get this job because of X, Y, and Z. And they're like, but we didn't even see it because we were just interested in what you were saying. So we do all make mistakes. So if you ever go through some of these things, please don't ever beat yourself over these because the mistakes will always do happen. Once again, if you want to see a mock interview that I did with Kia and Nombu, uh, please click on the link here and it will take you through that job interview. You go through every single thing and watch how we go through some of the questions, how we do your follow up, how to make sure that, you know, you answer some of these things back. Uh, top of the morning once again with Siri. And thank you so much for watching through up until the end. And if you've been here, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace.